Uh, just a few words before we start. Thank you for coming. Th uh, welcome to the uh, A to Just Talks conference. My name is Peter Dimitrov, the director of A to Just Festival. I'm very, very happy and very proud to uh, to present you our speakers uh, uh, at, at the conference this year. Uh, please, uh, your applause is for Mr. Boyan Georgievich. important for, for us, the artist, uh, topic of how to showcase. I hope you, you, you managed to come last night on, the, uh, on our showcase model, so you, you already know uh, what is actually the, uh, is the showcase and what is its purpose. And thank you, Marike Meishke, for accepting to be our moderator. Please applause for, for Marike. Just to let you know that it's uh, it's going to be not just a lectures, but it's uh, open it discussion, uh, and uh, you can you can ask your question or comments. Is that correct? Um, uh, anytime. So I wish you a successful work and uh, fruitful results. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Welcome. It's a nice. Uh, you know, it's a nice room with a lot of people from all kinds of areas. That's really nice. Um, yes, showcasing. Uh, it's a drag and it is fantastic. Um, there's many things you can say about it. And um, first, I would like to, before we go into the subject um, deeply, uh, I would like to um, ask um, my, uh, my, your speakers, to introduce themselves just very briefly, so we know where they're from. I mean, it's all there, but I mean, you know. <coughs> so, um, still, I mean, so you can just... <coughs> okay, let's yes, start. Please, okay. Yes, please, yes, uh, please. My name is Oriol Roca. I come from, uh, not far from Barcelona, in, uh, in Spain. And I do work as an artisti artistic director in a showcase festival, which happens at uh, mid-September. This year it's going to be between 13th and 17th of September and we do program around 50 uh, concerts and all kind of music styles are, are considered in the, in the, and we have around 100 international delegates attending in there and uh, 800 uh, Spanish uh, delegates attending in there, more or less that would be the resume of what, uh, what I do. And you're the oldest showcase festival. Yeah, and we are the oldest showcase festival in Europe. Uh, Eurosonic says that they also, uh, but they are started yeah. as, as a festival and not a showcase festival. But are you so sure? We are. Yeah, are you sure you're not the oldest festival of the world? No, no, oh. for sure. Hmm. No, no. I'm a little oh, bit no. disappointed here no, now, but no. okay. <laughs> Europe, that, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> Christina. Hello, my name is Christian Semba. I am originally from France and based in Berlin since many years. And I work for Womex, Worldwide Music Expo, another uh, event where we have a part which is a trade fair, a conference part, and also a showcase festival. Uh, the genre is something we hate to define. Uh, it started being called world music, but it's something we don't like so much to rely because it's sometimes we can talk about it at one moment, if you want. I don't want to open a conversation now. And um, I've done different positions within Womex. I've been for a while a uh, director of content and programming. And now I'm more taking care of uh, the things that a little bit outside of the box, like different projects. And one of them being the Womex Academy. I can also talk about it later. Please do. <laughs> <coughs> Hello, uh, it's nice to see you uh, in these numbers. Uh, thanks for uh, A2 Jazz Festival and Peter to invite us all. Uh, my name is Bojan Djordjevic and here I am uh, not only as festival organizer and as we do three different festivals in Belgrade, not only as a world music journalist, radio journalist, but also as a manager of several bands who has been showcases at Womex and other spaces so I can combine my experiences and also share it with you uh, about how to showcase, what is the good showcase and what 
the most important thing is also on the other side is what we as programmers are seeing uh, as a good showcase. Thank you. How many musicians <coughs> do we have in the room here? Yeah. <laughs> I see some experienced, I see some maybe uh, people that are starting. Um, I guess uh, that you all have experienced um, a showcase festival, is that true? Yes, more or less. So um, um, please, and this, this counts for, for, for everyone, uh, please, if you have a question, raise your hand, I'll check, and um, you don't have to wait for us to say uh, any questions. Okay, so um, uh, it, this really needs to be a, a dialogue. Because, you know, we can talk about this for hours among us, and then, you know, so, uh, well, okay, I, I thought we'd just start with the beginning, you know, um, my first question would be, and, you know, let's see who wants to answer the questions. I know a few questions, you know, are good for particular uh, expertise, but, um, so, who should showcase? <laughs> it's sort of the first question, and it's also about, you know, um, the difference between emerging artists and established artists, because there is a, there are various showcase festivals, of course, and some are really for the emerging ones, and some have a mixture, and some, I don't know, you know more about that than I do. I would say that it really depends first on the showcase uh, spot where we would like. I mean, if you want to do Womex, then you have to not be emerging without CD or with one CD and completely come unprepared. That was also my experience with Ben Dimanhana, who was showcasing in 2012 in Vomex. They were young and one year uh, already. That was far too early for them. Now they are becoming big and they have been showcasing last year in FIRA, so it went perfectly. On the other side, on the same Vomex in Saloniki, there was Boban and Marko Markovic, already established band who has been touring worldwide, having 120 concerts per year, and then they made a really excellent showcase because there is experience and even the preparations were good. So it really, I mean, the bands should be prepared for whatever kind of, I mean, small showcases like this, but then you get this many uh, people in the audience. I mean, most of the artists, as we spoke, were shocked how many people were there and how the positive reaction was. And then you have much smaller showcase, like it was Without Borders in Baltic, in the same country in Bulgaria, which is much smaller, but sometimes the small is good, and also you have this direct contact. But you really have to try to find out what is the showcase festival, what kind of music. I mean, if you go to Wick, it's all kinds of uh, music. If you go to the very particular uh, showcase festival, you know if this is the space for you. And then, of course, I mean, you will make maybe mistake once, but don't make it two or three mm -hmm. times. So you, would you say it's easy for um, uh, young musicians you know, to, uh, to find this information, to, to, to know which would be the good festival for them? I mean, in the modern internet times, I think there are informations existing. Whether they are collected or not, this is another issue. As far as I know, Womex has, has some database of the showcase festivals with some information, Hangweto as well. So, and, and this is what we spoke. It will be important if this kind of basic uh, information could be on one spot, so maybe can people check it out. But on the other hand, Musicians, if they want to showcase, they have to try to search. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, as they are searching for the clubs and the festivals, they also have to try to search what is good for them. I mean, also being the member of the jury here in Budapest Ritmo, I know how many uh, bands are ap appealing and approaching uh, with the proposals. And some are making mistakes. Like here, they were reading, okay, this is A to jazz, and we are jazz, and they are not eligible. So first of all, if they don't make this step, then they are not ready to showcase even mm -hmm. they are good band and eligible. And also, I mean, also the rules which are existing, it's always there. I mean, you have to read it first and then not just say, okay, let's go. I mean, okay, somebody invites you, but you have to You're check out. You're talking about the criteria. Criteria, yeah. yeah, the yeah. Are they clear? You can, is there anyone who can say something about that? I mean... I think that they are clear. For but most festivals? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you think that, yeah. Yeah, for example, in, in, <laughs> for a, you. Web, in a website, before applying yeah. for playing in there, that's the criteria of the mm -hmm. selection of bands. The problem is that 
people is not used to read everything and goes you to the, to, to <laughs> yeah. fill the form in yeah that that uses to happen because yeah. if they would read that there's plenty of of, of proposals that mm -hmm. they would say okay that's not for me for example and yeah. i think that the criteria is more or less clear and you can also take a look at the the lineup from another year so Absolutely. you can you can have an idea and i yeah. would add what what you said it's important to study uh, and to know uh, what kind of delegates are attending in that showcase festival or, or that other. And if <clears throat> that's interesting for your career, because I don't know if you are from here and uh, you pretend to go to a showcase festival, she wants to talk. Yeah, I know, I know, I know she wants to talk. <laughs> I thought you never stop, you know. No, 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 but you can, <laughs> you can finish, you know. Yeah, we, I, I, I saw you. So, um, hi, what is your name and what is... Yeah, Anna, yes. <laughs> For sure. The, and it's about artists and the administrator, yeah. administrators. Yeah. So it's not so clear. It's sometimes very fuzzy. And it's also about how many real opportunities you have uh, to understand what is like the lineup, the people, yeah. that, where do you belong to. Mm -hmm. yeah. so these things are really very, very I know. Uh, fragile. For sure, for sure. I agree. That's useful. Yeah, yeah for sure, for and sure. Sometimes that's Google that, that's uh, Translate has a very bad day. But I mean, I see. Let me say that in your case, I know you apply it and you receive a mail saying you have not been selected for playing in Mercat de Musique Bédique. I know, but the problem is that we receive 1,000 uh, applications and we can just program 50. Don't take it personally. Which it doesn't mean that it, it, we cannot be useful for you or that you should keep trying for that, but. Uh, in your case, you were in, uh, in the criteria of the... Uh, yeah, yeah. I know that it's not about that. It, yeah. It's just about yeah, yeah, yeah. the experience I have with it now for some time. Yeah. And that I understand the both sides, because I also do the festival, so I understand. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe just to add a few comments. Please. I don't know if it's clear for everybody what is a showcase. <laughs> maybe also... We yeah, just in few words, uh, what is the difference between a showcase and a normal gig? Because there are some differences. And uh, so a showcase is uh, something which is developing more and more. Uh, we see more and more showcase events, showcase festivals. And what is the difference? It is something for artists to present their work. So it's not sometimes a normal concert, even if it happens in a normal festival, so some of our events are strictly with a professional audience, some other events like here integrate some professional delegates like we are here, but also some uh, general audience. And it is different in terms of, okay, you present yourself, to you present your work with the aim to probably circulate, promote your work, uh, make your work known by uh, professionals. So it is a different thing than organizing a concert. And most of the time, you are not paid or you receive a very little fee. So also it is important to consider the fact it is an investment, is it worth it? And it's not just an investment in terms of money, but also in terms of time, because organizing all what you are, I mean, all the logistic, all the promotion, it's lots of time, lots of work. And also, it's an investment in terms of credibility. Because uh, doing a good showcase can make it be very useful for the career of an artist, and it's why it's supposed to be. But a bad showcase can really destroy many years of career. So it is really something to think very carefully about. It's not just, oh, I try everything and let's see what happens. What sometimes we have the impression we receive uh, proposals where you think, mm -hmm. you have the impression the, the person didn't, was not aware where uh, you're applying. And um, a second thing is who, I mean, who can do a showcase? I mean, in terms of Womex, um, we see many different cases and we cannot just say it's one profile or one right profile uh, for, for artists to showcase. Um, in general, these are artists or bands, like, like Boyan was saying, who are already 
established locally and are really solid locally and want to expand more on the international level. This is a most common case. But we see sometimes artists who are very emerging in, in, in the sense that they don't have a management or they don't have a booking agency, etc. Sometimes it's very dangerous because it is lots of work to organize a showcase. And this, it is also, if you just come, play, and you think you are waiting that all the fruits fall on your head, that will not probably happen this way. So it's really work before mm. and afterwards. So I have to be very aware about all mm. the work which is linked to a showcase. It's not just being on stage and play and wait. But some do it and very well. So we have these examples. We have also some cases of artists who want to relaunch their career because we're doing something mm -hmm. new, so they m can must I, be... Sorry, can I just, uh, yeah. just go back to the... Yeah. Because basically you're saying um, that they should have their own criteria. And what are those criteria? I mean, because I'm on a lot of juries and I see sometimes videos shot by an iPhone and that can be very good, but it is, I think, well, you know, you really want to send this YouTube, you know, this is probably you're not ready. So what would be the criteria as an emer to, you know, to just go back to the emerging artist, uh -huh. to say, okay, I'm ready to do this, you know. Um, about criteria, you mean in quality of For the, for the musician itself, what, what criteria can they set for themselves to say, I'm ready to do this now? You know, their socials, do they have to be in order? Um, I mean, should, you know, things like that. In, in terms of quality, Websites I, I mean, again, Talking about Romex is difficult because we have artists from all over the world. So, of course, you don't have yeah. maybe the same access of good production yeah, yeah. in some continents. And that doesn't mean that the, uh, your live show will be worse. In, in general, it's the opposite. <laughs> but, uh, so that's very difficult. I mean, we cannot say we put criteria in terms of quality um, of applications. I can give later some tips about applications. Please. But, so it's not that. Uh, our criteria, okay, again, talking about Romex, um, are several. One, which is very important, and it is something many people ap applying do the mistake. Uh, the first, first rule is what you see is what you get. That means when you apply for something, when you propose something, it's really you propose what you will show on stage. And very often we receive applications where you have, for example, we have five musicians on stage, you have a video with four musicians, you have some recordings with ten. Yeah, and, yeah. So, and some people think, okay, and they will choose what they want. No, in this case, in case of doubt, you are not selected. Because the jury has no time to think twice or third, okay, what are they proposing? So if it's not clear what you propose, you have very little chances to, to be selected. It's one rule. It's a very good one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Martina. Yeah, Martina here, here comes the mic. mic. <laughs> yeah. I'm Martina from a Music Meeting Festival in the Netherlands and uh, here as an upbeat expert uh, of the network. And uh, it's very uh, something that I really thought uh, for the first time when, when Christine said that it's really that has to go uh, on every level what uh, application is made of. Uh, so it's a, a video, picture, technical writer, and a description of the of of the band that has to be really consistent. Uh, that so is not too long the description of the band because. <laughs> and the description now, the description has to go along with the re really everything mm. that is there. So on YouTube video that you upload, if there is a trio, that has to be trio. On the picture, has to be trio, and not with featuring artists. The the sing the songs or the tracks that they are uploaded. So everything that is a part of this application has to really go along with this rule. What you see is what you get, and what you hear is what you get. So that was. That so was if you had a nice gig with a symphony orchestra. Um, sorry, don't put the video in there because <laughs> yeah. you can put yeah, it, it as an information, lot, actually. but not as main yes, video. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I understand you're proud of it, but <laughs> you know, it's not going to yeah. be booked. And don't think people will be creative. And yes, yeah, sometimes also we have, like, receive you know uh, collab new collaboration of two musicians. For example, you get you know material of one and two, 
and just be creative and imagine what it's going to be. No, that doesn't yeah. work. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one other thing I find personally uh, hard, um, it's um, there are a lot of videos made, um, which is in a sort of a <coughs> about how the, the album came um, the to the world, the making of the album. So, you, so there's um, a studio session and they're having a lot of fun, which is really, I'm very happy for them all. And then, and then there's a lot of talking about it, about the whole philosophy behind the album, which is also very interesting. And then you hear a little bit of music and they're playing. And then he starts talking, or he or she starts talking again. And th there's just no way we can watch this whole thing because we don't hear the music. It's, it is a live situation, but not really a live situation. So I guess yeah. it, it's nice for, for the photo album. <laughs> but yeah. uh, what do you think? Yeah. I think that uh, in terms of uh, the videos that you share on uh, social media, there's, everything can be useful, for example, a, a video clip with a nice production or a making of, whatever, it's good for getting audience, for example. But for, for being programmed, what, which is more important, is a good recording live concert. That's the first thing we look at on the application. And after that, we also ask uh, that you explain us how useful can Mercat the Vic, can the showcase table be for your career? Then we can decide if we are a useful tool also for you or John. If you are looking for, I don't know, uh, hard rock uh, programmers, we know that we're not going to be the, a good festival because we do not have them. For example, we do also ask that, um, plus the bio, etc. But for me, it's really important for a showcasing or for. Uh, getting programmed even in, in, in regular festivals to have a good uh, live video recording. For me, that's really uh, useful. I don't know what my colleagues think about that point, but uh, I think that yeah. they will agree. <laughs> yeah, the video is definitely the most important, except the presentation. I mean, you can listen to the audio, but it doesn't represent because it could be like five years old or it could be completely different or band line Or studio, yeah. Yeah, in the studio at first, the live is the best for this kind of stuff. I mean, for the festivals, it could be different as well. Yeah, yeah and, and short, also choose really the short part. Sometimes a very nice like uh, concert, but you have like, we receive 30 minutes video. And you cannot expect, again, a uh, jury member to look through the 30 minutes to pick up the best moment. So do it for them. Uh, pick up, send maybe two best pieces showing two different atmospheres. But really make sure to get the best pieces and, and, and make the work easy. First, imagine somebody who has to review 1,000, 1,500 bands where we'll not have the time to research. So. Mm -hmm. I have a question for uh, showcasing people. Um, uh, let me think, what was it? Um, how do you prepare? I mean, do you have a different, you know, it, of course it's a shorter time than a regular concert. So how do you choose your, you know, how do you create your playlist? Do you start with an upbeat kind of thing or do you talk in between or do you feel like, oh, we don't have much time. So um, do you try to connect with the audience or how do you, Prepare for that. Is it a is it a different vibe? Is it a different way? Uh, no, uh, Nani, hi. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Nani. I'm from the Netherlands, and I showcase the Hi, is that better? Yeah. Okay. Hi, my name is Nani. I'm from the Netherlands, and I showcased in five different festivals, mainly in the States. Funnily enough, so APAP, NAM, Folk Alliance. And then jazz ahead and in jazz in Europe. I will play in Fira in, in November. Um, and what I find about the set list of the showcase is that it has to represent, like imagine that a programmer walks into the room. There are many showcases happening at the same time, especially in an event like in jazz or jazz ahead. And uh, they will only have 10 minutes to be in the room. So I would plan my set list to have at least every three songs to convey the entire concert within these three songs. So in every given moment where somebody goes into the hall and sees only 10 minutes, they will have the review of my entire concert or my entire range as an artist in these t 10 minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 
take notes. And also, <laughs> yeah, also quite important, I think, is also you have, when you're selected to showcase, to find out where are you playing, what kind of audience, and what kind of venue. Because if you are selected for Womex, and if you don't know where it is and what are the other bands, because then you see people are moving around and you can be really desperate because half of the audience is leaving at one point and then in the next five minutes the another half will come again. So you have to really uh, check out all this stuff. And then, of course, uh, for the showcase, uh, it's also for the artists, it's important to decide whether they can afford uh, the sound engineer, which I will think it's vital uh, for the good showcase, but I know sometimes it's really, really difficult because experiencing different showcase festivals, you see that some places are with a terrible sound that ruins, I mean, your career without uh, your uh, doing anything wrong. I mean, you are doing nice, prepared everything, you are selected, you have good material, but then the sound is ruining everything and then you are down. To add something to to <coughs> Boyan's comment, commentaries, uh, yeah, because okay, here the showcases is on one stage at one moment, but m many festival showcase festival have different stages running parallelly or more or less parallelly, and this is something extremely important for the artist to know that anybody can come at any moment. People don't stay all over your show, and that means any moment. Everybody, somebody can come in and stay for 10 minutes and leave again. That doesn't mean that they don't like your show. Some artists get a little bit um, insecure, thinking, oh my God, these people, they leave in the middle of my show, they don't like it. But it's just because another band is started. And that's the first thing which is extremely important to know and brief all artists, because some, we ask always a showcase representative to do that, but sometimes it's not done. And another important thing, especially if you play for a showcase festival where you have a practically only a professional audience, it is the most difficult audience. We talk, I mean, it's not that we are not listening, but during Bomex, I have one ear and one uh, eye on the stage and one ear and one eye uh, talking with a colleague because we didn't meet, and, and such a horrible audience. Sorry for that, <laughs> but it's true. It's not like the easiest audience who will be just for you. And um, some artists also make a little bit, I would say, a mistake to just come into stage and they say, hey, there are, and clap in your hands. That's a difficult thing. I wouldn't go for that at the beginning of a showcase. If you see that the audience is super warm and super, yeah, you can try. But that's also something which can make you insecure if you go on stage and the first thing you say is try to make the professional and then sing along or so. That can go wrong. <laughs> so it's a special audience and sorry for that, we are not the best audience. But, but we are with you and we check you. <laughs> yeah, and we don't yeah. use to dance. Uh, Say it, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's... Oh, but some, you should some encourage girls, us. Some, we don't use to dance. Some do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but <laughs> most of us. And I would also add to that is that uh, I've, I've also been manager from some bands during the past, not now. And uh, one uh, common error is to think that, well, I've been selected for playing in Womex or in uh, Eurosonic or in that big uh, showcase festival. And the artist says, I'm going to invite guests and do the best concert uh, of possible. That's, that's the worst thing you can do because you need to show to the delegates which is your regular show because you are pretending to get more contracts after that concert. So you, uh, it's the same as the application. Mm. Do what you want to sell after the, that concert because at the end, uh, a showcase festival is a place for selling and buying live music. Mm. So it, it's important to have that, uh, that in mind and also attending in the, as uh, delegates there to pass the, the performing, not playing in the, in the stage. And the other one is how do you prepare the meetings? How do you find uh, the, the delegates you want to talk to with? And also if there's a spin meetings to, um, to select the spin meetings that can be useful for you uh, in terms of don't make waste time to the other delegates. Try to be effective mm -hmm. in, in everything you do. No? Yeah, no. so you're basically saying um, be you. It's just like, you know, like a restaurant and then when this, they know this restaurant critic is inside, they all, you know, start to really try to impress. So don't try to express. Just be you. 
Maybe. Uh, but uh, try, try to impress, sorry, but you know, but express. Yes. <laughs> yes. Maybe you start the playlist. Uh, the asking art artist. My suggestion for the artist: they have to know how long is the set, and make it shorter than it's 40 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. Okay. Just a little bit shorter. So don't leave the last song, which should be the really last song, like on the concert. And then at the end, they said, sorry, no time. And you have to go out and you don't finish. Leave two minutes or three minutes, uh, not spend it. Uh, because usually uh, uh, the showcase, when you have to present, it takes a little bit more time. And then if you are without the last song and they are desperate and the audience didn't get the last song, which should be the punchy one. So prepare the shorter version. I think that's a really good tip. Nani, you have a question. Thanks. No, I just want to add, because I think this is an excellent point, what you just said, yeah. Boyan. Uh, I would really recommend artists to rehearse the actual set that they are going to perform, and also the things you're going to say in between. Because a lot of the people who are showcasing, English is not their main language, and also when you are first time in the, from... Uh, on the stage with a big audience of professionals, you might get stage fright. So you don't want to be looking at your shoes, you know, while you're talking and or when somebody else is doing a solo in the band, you don't want to like stand there endlessly and not know what to do. Make sure that your band knows, oh, this guy's making a solo. We have to look at him. We have to dance a little bit. We have to do something. Uh, if you have something to say, practice that in advance. And Oriol also gave an excellent point about preparing the meetings because I would not go to showcase before I meet all the people in the actual conference and promote the showcase yeah. because there are so many things on the lineup People will not come to your showcase if they don't know you and if they didn't hear about you from a colleague. So first of all, go to a, sh to a conference before you're showcasing to check it out, meet people. Second of all, the second time you go and if you have a showcase, come a few days before, prepare little flyers with the date and the time of your showcase. Talk to people, make appointments, and then invite them within the actual showcase to your showcase. So that's really important to create these relationships. Yeah, but that, yeah. that's a way of working more directly. Not, it's not uh, as important for a regular show. The Instagram or that kind of social media, it's more to, uh, to point directly to the delegates we're interested in. Uh, no? Do you agree? Yeah. Just, but there is also one more thing. About being natural, so if sure. you really, you know, uh, do everything uh, in advance and rehearse everything in advance, when you talk to the audience, be natural, be present, be in the moment, because it's also about the real connection with the people and not having a prepared things to say. So for me, it's I have a clue what I will say, but I do not rehearse the sentences, you know, because then you are not with the people. For so sure. for the uh, artist, it is very important to be really live. It's great to have a great preparation, and this preparation is actually all the kilometers of the performances that you have bef yeah. before, but then be in the moment, be alive and be warm to, to the people that you are, you know, presenting this to, and that's... I no, think sure, what is more here, here. If you what show, if, if in your show, show you are natural, uh, habitually and warm, you, you, is, is what I said, you have to present in a showcase festival the same as you do in another, in another concert, but being uh, conscious that less, less time of the set list, thinking that the, uh, all the, the delegates will leave after 10 minutes, that it means nothing. It's important to have that in mind, but you have to do the same that you do in a regular concert, but checking those things in consideration. Sometimes it's hard because you're in a congress center and it's sort of, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it's just a terrible room and, but still, we, we love you, you know, so don't <laughs> never forget that. <laughs> but, and we are here, you know, because we need each other. I mean, it is, I had a talk with a colleague about that this morning. I mean, um, I guess, you know, it's important to find some, um, equality, which is not easy, of course, because there are not enough spots for, for people to play. So, but we really need each other. We need you, and you know, and you need us. So, I think also a good relationship that is not just about music or the last CD, or you know, we can talk about something else too. And just, it's, I think it's important to build personal relationships. 
and doesn't matter what age. And I, that's, I think that's happening more and more, and I like that. As on, you know, like on Jazz Ahead, this works really well, and yeah. and uh, it's very easy to um, to connect. And we can also talk about another, about books or. I had one or two more comments about the set list, <laughs> so, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> so we can close the topic. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so uh, practice, and I really advise that you just film yourself, and you try different set lists, but you really film and look at yourself, then look at the video. It's uh, probably the best way to feel comfortable afterwards. Regarding talking, not talking, I think it's really a personal thing. Uh, but I mean, it's something you shouldn't force, but yeah. If you want to say a few words in English and it's not your language, it's better to be prepared. And one very important thing in the timing, and something I saw last night, which would be a no-go at Womex, encore. Two showcases made encore. That would be a no-go at Womex. I mean, in many but other... That's not a mistake of the band. No, yeah, but then, I mean, that's if... if terrible yeah. organizer, yeah. yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Is what is she doing know? here? <laughs> but be very aware, even if the audience is super like, ah, and so if the stage manager tells you to leave the stage, unfortunately you can just say, yes, yeah, sorry, come back and thank people. But don't try to overdo on your own. I mean, we had this example at Womex, I will not say the name of the artist, of course. Well, it had a very nice showcase, everything ran super well, the audience was receptive, the stage manager was saying, and it carried on for almost 10 minutes until they, they cut the sound. And actually, he thought he was super cool. He got 10 minutes more. Mm -hmm. And some festival directors who wanted to book him said, no. Yeah. I mean, if this guy does the yeah. same on my festival, yeah. I've also tight. You're taking 10 minutes from another band. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's a absolutely crime. a no-go. The guy came out of the stage saying, I'm the coolest person in the world. He didn't realize he completely killed his career. So it's... Stupid, but it's uh, really important to know. So people should go to the Uzbekistan for their showcasing festival where they play 15 minutes and they cut off the electricity. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there was things then. Yeah. <laughs> but again, Boyan, I mean, your, you know, your tip to, um, to make a shorter set is very good. Yes, like and kneel, kneel this down will to never the happen, audience, then. just... Climb, uh, just climb on stage, say hello, thank you a lot, and then leave, and then uh, mm -hmm. there will be lots of opportunities for yeah. after that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also very important to support other bands. I mean, you know, you know, to connect <coughs> with other bands and to stick together and not, you know, be in a race because sometimes, mm -hmm. of course, it's like a race, mm -hmm. and you don't want that really. Yeah, so, I mean, um, yeah. imagine being a band waiting half an hour at a regular festival concert that somebody else is finishing extended concert and then yeah, you're no. okay. I mean, you're not going to be friends with those people. No, no. So be kind and gentle and human and be good to your neighbors and your friends and make friends. I mean, welcome back. I'm very happy that you didn't decide to stay at the bar. Um, we have time for that later. Um, during the break, I had an interesting talk with uh, uh, Peter, and uh, so he fired me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we talked about, um, he said to me, um, in, 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 Bul in Bulgaria, the, you know, showcasing, this is rather new. I mean, mm. are there, you know, and there are quite some Bulgarian mm. artists in the room, and we, we, we talked to Anna, but I mean... And perhaps we're going a bit too fast, maybe, for you, because mm -hmm. you go like, like, yeah, this is how it goes, and, um, you know, everybody knows. But I, mean, I can imagine maybe you need to have some more information. Are there people, who, are there people here who have not showcased before, but, are, you know, want to do it, or are about to do it? Is, that, is there anyone here in the room? No? So are there people who are showcasing since, you know, a year or so, or a few years, starting off, I don't know. What, we, what were you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I told you that it's, it's very new for, no. for the country. Yeah, it's new for the country. But how many Bulgarian musicians are in the room? Uh, from you, Oriel, um, and I'm sure it's fine with you. I mean, if you catch us later after this talk, you just need, feel like you want to talk about certain things. You just just come up to us, and we can have a, a talk, and we can answer any question if we 
have the answers. If we have yeah. the answers. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I must say that uh, two persons came to me after the first Already. part, asking interesting questions, and I told them, ask your question in the audience, because the answers will be useful not only for Even you. Even better, yes. So point, I hope point name. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to point, I hope they will recognize themselves. <laughs> Speak up. <laughs> don't be shy. Yes. Uh, because, you know, we don't want to hear ourselves talk yeah. all the time. Is there anyone? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, what's your name? My name is Melanie Lova. Thank you. My name is Melanie Lova, and I'm a manager, and I do have a question about showcases. So, are you checking every single application that you get from musician, or you're not even skipping, but you, you're not seeing any of them, for example? I do listen all of them. All. All of them. Uh, being honest, uh, I have to say that there's some that with uh, 10 seconds or, or less, I, I can see that it's not, uh, I, I don't judge if it's good or if it's bad, I, just if it's appropriated for the showcase festival I'm, I'm in. And some of them with 10 seconds listening that live concert or whatever, I see that it's not uh, good enough. But yeah, because uh, it's it's about a, a music a style or uh, whatever, or it's really really emerging. For for example, one of our criteria is that it's needed that uh, a band behind the a manager behind the, the band or a, or some booking agency or a self structure quite solid in order to 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 be in there. Because we don't program emerging artists in in a in a way of. A, bands that have just go out from the school or they, they are really, really new and unexpected. We, so uh, th there's some criteria that quickly we, we, we listen to all of them because sometimes maybe if we, if we don't or if we just read the, the bio or whatever um, and we don't listen to uh, the music, sometimes we lose some really interesting things and sometimes we've discovered really amazing bands and you've, we've just put an eye on them in order to follow their careers because maybe the, the, this year is, is not the best year but some years later maybe uh, it's good to follow what where they are doing so it's really yeah i would like just to add something uh, do you actually connect for example a band that you like it's not really for your festival but you think that it's for the festival b are you connecting this band maybe to that organizer? Uh, I do that sometimes, yes. Yeah, I do it, but uh, I think that before the the, 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 the the session before, you started with a nice uh, topic. No. It, yeah, about a, a part of talking about business, making uh, relationships yeah. with, with other delegates, that kind of things. It's, we can do that, but... Um, it's impossible with the number of applications that we have that we do that with a, all of them. So, but sometimes, and I don't know, being in here or being in some other festivals or showcase festivals, I meet people and I just have good relationships or, or I, I get friends and and we are advisors one from the other. So it's good to uh, connect with other people. And then, as as she says, you maybe can suggest this. I, I don't know. I've listened to your proposal, but it's easier to do that if we are talking in here, in in in, in the in between. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, maybe we're not the best, but try to go to uh, I don't know with Hang Veto in a, or whatever, uh, whatever. I don't know. Listening to the to the proposal, but we don't have time enough in order to to send. A, uh, yeah, we, we, it's not for us, but you should go with, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, I have a few colleagues that uh, they call me sometimes and they say, oh, I just need one more band for the festival and kind of this or that, did you know something? Or And then, you know, you remember something or it's like, oh, this fits, you know, and this is often also coming from applications. So, um, you know, it sticks in your head and you think maybe not here, but maybe there. Well, you try. I mean, it's good to do that. I mean, to be in touch. And we see each other a lot on all the various um, conferences and festivals. So we talk, about, we talk a lot about, you know, oh, this is a great band I heard, and, uh, you know, you should check it out. And so, yeah, that happens. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, we might not listen to the bands if we know the band already, like some bands which were showcasing yesterday already knew them from concert or from other applications, and don't, you don't have to listen, you just decide on what, what you have, so it's easy, but then definitely there is no time to just say, but 
when you are showcasing, then it's at the time to speak with uh, the people who are uh, there, and they will, can help you. And then you can stay in the contact, because this personal contact is important. If you are just having an application, and then somebody doesn't know you, that, that's not. When you meet in person, then you can continue, and then you can really push, okay, please, can you tell me, and can you help mm -hmm. me, because most of us would like to do it. But yeah. regarding applications, also, I mean, a question I got a little bit from you, I think, also. Maybe, I mean, most of the events, we have a time of the year where we open applications, and we have online application systems, where basically, we have basic things that you have to, to provide, yeah, like uh, photo, biography, audio, videos, we were talking about that. And... Um, so it's good to have all these things ready, and, and usually we have one time of the year where we open the applications, then it's closed, and then it is a time of reviewing. Uh, for Womex, for example, yeah, I was saying we receive around 1,500 applications, and we have five persons in the jury and three persons of the Womex team listening to everything. Usually the jury has to make also the job to listen to everything. And then pre-select around 400, and then we have the jury meeting. And for three days, we lock these people into a room <laughs> in Berlin in our office, wow. and they don't come out <laughs> until the selection is done. That's terrible. And, yeah, <laughs> but Martina was saying she would do it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh. it, is, it is a hard work, but it is, and, and so... But Womex is paying good. Hmm? Womex is paying good uh, money to the jury. Hmm? No. <laughs> Are they, no. You, get, you don't Even get paid not. for that, for this um, jail? <laughs> and not only the jury. Here is my... That, that was a very good experience. It was uh, already uh, 2007, uh, six years ago. And uh, I did uh, have like this kind of notebook uh, with me that, uh, you know, this is Womack selection. I was, uh, it took uh, two months out of my life, seriously, because I really checked every band and there were 1,492 uh, entrances. Wow. <laughs> so it was, I re always remember because it was like Columbus year, infamous. <laughs> But uh, that was really great, and I have this notebook until now. And there was this uh, bands like good for my jazz festival, that for global music festival. You know, it was really my very own private comment commentary, very analog, you know, handwritten. And then it was very useful, you know, for mm -hmm. me until now. And then when I see these bands uh, that were showcasing that year, like band Lankum, for instance, that now is huge and it's completely out of this global music scene. It went really different direction, very big. You know, I'm going to the concert in November. I have tickets. I'm happy. <laughs> so these are the bands. You know, it was uh, it, it was really like for me it was a very special year. Womax was in Katowice. We organized that. I was there uh, samurai. But it really, you know, I have this notebook. So this is a very good question actually. <laughs> you know, that you do ask because mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of work, a lot of time. And I remember that I traveled only once, that two, two months, uh, just for three days, and I was very stressed, you know, that I'm missing, like, already, like, my, even, you know, I, my weekends were involved, uh, my family listened to the, like, not knowing in the background this music, because... Uh, she got a divorce, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not true. <laughs> but it was, uh, yeah, so it's worth it, you know, it's worth it, and uh, mm -hmm. when you take it very seriously, it's a uh, very good uh, work uh, for but years. Also, yeah, but Martina, yeah. also, I mean, um, um, even if you're not selected, if the band's not selected, I mean, they're heard by some, you know, programmers that are, can be very influential. And sometimes I hear them say during a, uh, a jury meeting, uh, well, this is good, but, you know, they need uh, a bit more time. And then a few years later, you know, whoop, they're there. So, you know, they, they stay, they stay with us. So if the potential is there, Nani. It's also good to remember that it's nice to apply not only because of the showcase, because people who are sitting in the jury are also have their own festivals. So when I right. was on the, on the waiting list for Womex in uh, 2019, uh, one of the samurai invited me to play in his own festival as a result of mm -hmm. that just application. So you get your music heard by people that are looking for you. That's exactly yeah, what I mean. 
would like to add that, uh, as we speak at the, at the starting, that there are different uh, kinds of uh, showcase uh, festivals. There's uh, like Womex or Eurosonic that are really big in terms of delegates attending in there. That I, I, my advice would be, if you pretend to go there, I would suggest just to go there as a manager or artist attending as a delegate and not pretending to play in there and then knowing exactly how it works and then the year after or some years after then apply for that showcase because otherwise if you go to I don't know Eurosonic or uh, to Austin or to Womex without a previous experience it's it's really hard to manage everything and to being successful and good one yeah, yeah. definitely Anna you want to say yeah. There should be budget for that, and there should be you know, places where you can apply as an artist, you know, I agree. for all artists, not just for Europe, but as well Balkans, you know, even that some countries are in Europe or not, yeah. you know, so it's not a fair game, really, and that's what also sh should be uh, seen and said and heard. Uh -huh. But what is the fair game in this world? Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> oh. Anyway, uh, isn't there, uh, like, there is an idea and you're trying to reach it, and then things make sense in this world. And if there is no idea and you're not trying to reach it, then it's chaos. So. Yes, but we are unhappy to live in Serbia. So, I mean, some people have the other experiences, having other troubles. So, I mean, uh, just it's, uh, ju you have to accept. Uh, it's not but how, I mean, uh, you ask from the world music community to organize something to have eligibility, funding, budget? No, no, no. I'm not asking for the world music community. I'm just talking about it, and that's the point. When I talk about it, it, has, uh, it can be heard, and there can be an idea. Yeah, I, of course. Just yeah, it in in Belgium. There's some. I mean, in Belgium, booking agents get fun funded. Also in Catalonia. And yeah, yeah. so and absolutely, they I help mean. them with that. But then first, you have to even in the Serbia agents, can, can be funded. I mean, but this you know, is it, it, it would be interesting to think of a uh, of a model, of course. Um, yeah, and this is. I think for sure we can have a whole panel discussion about that. So, but thank you for your input because uh, yeah. for sure we will talk more about this. Um, Later but on, maybe yeah, it's important to to say some some words about funding and yeah, indeed it is very unfair because uh, there are some countries or region who which have uh, music export offices or this kind of structures which are supporting artists uh, invited to play showcases, and so of course it helps a lot if you have some money and the investment doesn't come from your own pocket. And very unfortunately, most of these uh, organizations are in uh, Europe or Western Europe, even not in every European country. And uh, I mean, the case of Omex, where we have artists playing from all over the world, and it's not fair from artists coming from South America, the Caribbean, of Africa, who has way more costs to come, and they are not supported. There are sometimes other ways uh, approaching Ministry of Culture, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, embassies. So in this case also, it's good to be creative and definitely something we, we try to do. I mean, we do the selection very early to allow artists, especially they come from far away, to organize a tour around their showcase. So they don't come just for one gig, which would cost lots of money, but make these travels more sustainable, and also for some of them, if they didn't play in Europe so much, also to get a kind of getting grooved into European audience, for example. But that's unfortunately very unfair. Yeah. 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 Because we are here because we are part of the most music project, and that's how we got here. Mm -hmm. So we got the budget to come here to travel, and we also got the sport and the knowledge and. You know, like a year before, I wouldn't have known all of this, mm -hmm. but now I feel like I understand that. Yeah. Cool. So well, let's create most number two. Yes. I would say that th that makes more sense about the advisements I said, as uh, you have to do an investment for going to a showcase festival. If it's a big one or uh, you don't know it, 
it's uh, it's less cost if you go just one person to know how those yeah. do, how does it works that really big showcase festival yes. and then after that you can uh, apply for that and I would add in uh, in Mercat de Vic we do pay musicians for playing in there not a big salary but do, do we we do pay 150 euros per person technical uh, sound engineer light engineer tour manager plus accommodation and plus internal transportation so it's something it's not enough to pay flights or whatever but we but think it that, covers yeah, yeah it covers something yeah yeah I would recommend, uh, as most of the people are here from Bulgaria, that also you should start with the uh, uh, showcase festivals which are closed and there is a lot uh, less m investment needed, like PIN conference in yep. uh, Skopje, uh, which is also a good point where you will meet first uh, for the first time people and you are introduced and then you see, okay, how uh, you can develop, uh, create some, uh, your own network, uh, it, so it's even it's probably not too expensive to go to Skopje to Pink Conference. It's a nice place, really nice showcase uh, festival, and also a place where you will meet lots of delegates and then also check out whether, I know, Athens always say it's too uh, far and maybe too expensive, but then Budapest Ritmo is another because this is another way, uh, also a festival and showcase festival. In Belgrade, I would say for the world music artists, there are not specific uh, showcase festival, but then try to reach out in the region. That would be the first one. And this is what I say, uh, uh, most uh, Balkan festival in Vesprem at the second weekend of uh, September is the good point. If you can, can, can come there, uh, there will be like 150 people from the business, let's say, or from the world music community. You will meet them and you can talk to them. I mean, you will not be showcasing, but if you are sending a manager or band member, it's a good point to meet people and to try to build up your uh, community. Yeah, for sure. I would add that. Yeah, that's a, I think that's really a good advice, and I think that the thinking about internationalization, it's better to start in your in your own country, then the, the, your neighbors, and then doing that step by step, not pretending to go from nothing to Womix or uh, to Austin, Texas, or whatever, and then get the I don't know a really well known all around uh, artist. Mm -hmm. It's better to start and being really st strong in your area, then you'll have more power in order to uh, to export. That's my point of view. Yeah. But maybe that's a topic from the next... Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, another thing I talked to you about uh, earlier, um, when I went to um, uh, to Bremen, to uh, Jazz Ahead, um, in last April, May, um, there were several musicians who asked me, could, could you introduce me to, you know, people? And, and actually it worked really well. So I had like four musicians. And I, you know, every day I took someone or, you know, or half a day or for a few hours, we just were, and we just walk, <laughs> we walk and walk and walk. And it's like, oh yeah, this, oh yeah, this person, you know, it's like, did you, do you know? And then you leave them there and then, or you walk on or, you know, but actually that worked well. And um, so if you can find a person that knows, that has a network and I, they're, I think, willing, I think for sure they're willing to help you with that if you are at a, place where there are a lot of delegates, where there are a lot of pro music professionals, just ask them to introduce you, because it's very simple, it's very easy to do, and this it's just a little thing, but it might work. For sure. And um, yeah, so, well, yeah, question. Sorry, you were in the corner of my eye. Sorry, I just wanted to ask... What's your name? Uh, Dave. Hi. I just wanted to ask a question, uh, similar to what you've just mentioned, actually. How can an... And, uh, an extreme introvert make new contacts without... That is a, <laughs> without I, I know the answer. <laughs> without coming across like you want something from them, or please do me a favour, do yes. this for me. You don't want us to come across like that, but what can we do? Oh, no, this is such a good question, really. Thank you for that. And I'm in the... Um, I'm studying like um, a, a psychology or a, a particular <laughs> method, you know, um, because I want to help the introverts. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I'm going to set up a business, you know, I should check my website, um, where I will uh, do sessions with young musicians or create creative uh, people to um, actually to get that voice out, you know. Um, and I've been coaching um, around Europe, all kinds of musicians, and for a while I was coaching um, uh, six... Um, uh, Swiss bands and the Swiss I mean I don't want to generalize but I will um, the Swiss are very 
humble, <coughs> very modest. Um, for them to say, uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I hope I'm not offending anyone here. The, the cheese is very good, though. But um, uh, so they, and uh, there's one band, and it was a very expressive band. I mean, they had great visuals, and, and on stage, the, the videos, they looked great, but they couldn't talk to people. And they said to me, you know, we're playing this gig, and we know there's a label in the room, and we know there's a booking agent. We know that because we put them on the guest list. After the show, we don't go and talk to them because they are afraid to, to sell themselves. And this is, of course, a thing. Um, so, yes, uh, this is not an answer, I realize, but um, there are ways for them to learn that, to learn to do that, to become more aware, to, to get more into the core of the... Um, you know, to find their story. And there are also all kinds of um, talent developing programs that can work really well for that. So they are in many countries. So I think it would be good for them to find those and to be in those with other people. And, and, and coaches will be there also to help them with their stage presence. And, but important is to know what is your story? What is, because then it's easier to say and also their musical story. And, but it is difficult, I know, and, and I think every band should have a, a, some kind of a spokesperson. It might not be the band leader, but someone who is, you know, who can easily connect. So a band, you know, among each other, they can talk about that and, and see, like, how we're going to do this and make a plan or practice a bit. It helps practicing, or just, just the elevator kind of pitch. Practicing that, it, it helps, really. Just... <laughs> but I had uh, during Jazz Ahead, I get uh, like I got a hysterical like panic uh, uh, message from a, a musician friend of mine who was there. I wasn't there, and she said that uh, I'm so stressed. You know, I'm really having troubles with uh, with this amount of people. And I said that yeah, I understand. You know, just calm down and you know just go to these people and say hi for me. Just like you know, say, tell greetings for me that you know I couldn't be there. And then she went, she said, like, uh, oh, you know, Martina says greetings. And it was for her something very not, uh, very casual. And uh, she didn't have to. And then the conversation started. Because I had this really in the middle of, of the night. And I was just like, uh, she's like, I cannot do that. I'm introvert. I'm really not born for this. You know, I'm just playing music. And uh, why am I here? You know, and this kind of, I was like, yeah, just tomorrow. Just go to say, I gave her a list of people. Uh, who are friendly, nice, you know, very like open people, promoters, organizers, and then I was just go to this uh, uh, ten or five, you know, names, and then uh, say hi, and it worked. <laughs> so, so that was yeah. Really, yeah, the mentoring was, kind of yeah. thing, yes, yeah. to yeah. find someone who yeah is willing. I mean, I used to be, I used to be like that. Really. No, honestly. <laughs> And now I go like, wah, 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 you know, it's, <laughs> now it's too much, I know, but still, you know, but it, it is something that you can get over and learn, and there are ways and, and the exercises and things to do that, so, but I would love to talk to you about this later on also. Let's have a chat so, yes. <laughs> but I think that it's also important not to, uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Aerobics. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. No. They really need to be very deep in themselves in order to bring something new to this world, something yeah. original. Mm -hmm. So when you're in that stage, you are really very vulnerable. And I am an introvert, but I know how to express myself. So that's also original. <laughs> and you just remember that the person on the other side of the room or other chair, it's just a person as you are. Right. That's what it is. It's yeah. not the play of power. It's just you can offer something and they can take it or not, but it doesn't mean that you're bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. True. I would love to do a, a panel, like a three hour panel mm -hmm. on this topic, actually. Oh, yeah. uh, yes, I'm going to see. Hi. Yes. What's your name? Hello, everybody. I'm Ru from uh, Bazaar in Brussels. So I'm one of the. You presenters where the showcase uh, festivals uh, are organizing uh, for. First of all, I would say we, it's absolutely true. We are the worst audience there ever is. Mm -hmm. However, don't be, disapp um, don't be encouraged when you're performing at the showcase uh, festival and two-thirds of the hall is emptying 
uh, because of the audience, because of timing issues, because usually I, uh, it's my experience that those uh, could be the concerts where uh, it is not important that uh, people leave, it's just important that the 10 right people stay in the hall. Mm -hmm. The 10 right people after the concert say, this was something special. I know the audience, perhaps a part of the audience like it, but this for my festival or for my hall, this is a thing I want. So please don't make, um, don't be discouraged. The public uh, the reaction is totally something different than a professional reaction of a programmer that sees um, uh, a concert at the showcase. It's just one, one thing that I want to add because I, I'm usually the programmer that when the alt is empty, says, this is, uh, this is something I want to wanna see because this is <laughs> yes. something... Because uh, they're this looking is, for something different, th right? These are the things that I'm yeah. looking for. Yeah. So th that's one, one thing. The second thing is I understand the jazz ahead uh, thing, but um, don't overreact. I'm a, usually a programmer that is on jazz ahead that is approached every five meters uh, by someone uh, that wants to talk to you, and I, I must say, I'm really getting annoyed uh, by it. So I'm not, um, during, so be careful at the same time, because it's, it is it is the platform to do it. At the same time, um, it, it it could be really, you it, I don't think Jazz Ahead is the right platform to do it, to be honest, because your agenda is full. You're meeting 50 people a day, and the 51 person could be really the person you say, okay, thank you very much, but I have to, uh, and then and then you missed an, an opportunity uh, as well. So I'm not I'm not sure if I'm helping here or just uh, making it more complicated. <laughs> uh, um, You're depressing us. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I I started with a very positive comment. I told you uh, to not to honest. come in. You know? But but um, but. Yeah, you have to be, that, that's the, I, I understand the introvert, but you have to feel a little bit when it's the right moment. That's the only thing. And it that is I overwhelming, want. of course, because yeah. it's, you know, um, yeah, so yoga. Go to the yoga tomorrow morning, huh? <laughs> <laughs> At 8 o'clock. It really helps. Oh, hi, yes. I'm, I'm Schubert from Copy Yes. I wanted to add that not only musicians are introverts, some of us are also <laughs> in, introverts. So you should be really careful how to approach promoter or, or you know, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very scared now. <laughs> you know, sometimes we don't like 100 emails uh, per month. That or is a problem. Book me, yeah. book me, book me, you know. Yeah. That, uh, is my, my, that was my next question. How do you handle the emails? Because yeah. that is, and delete, then it's delete, just delete. before a, a conference or a festival, and right after, uh, you know, it's so much that you will you will drown. Um, yes. Yeah. So it's, when to do this? But also, it's a, yeah. The, when you are at the big showcase festival like Bomex or Jazz Ahead, it's a question. I mean, if you are there only for the first time, you are in trouble because maybe you will meet, lose opportunity. But it's not polite to stop people talking with somebody else and say, "So I'm this and that. And I give you CD, and that's not enough because then you need some time because people are talking most probably uh, with somebody they knew or they are already in the business. So maybe you will miss opportunity but that's why you have to pers be persistent and to be there once and twice so you'll, you will have more opportunities people remember your face and you will maybe catch the right moment because if you're interrupting something you're already uh, losing 50 true. percent of the good Absolutely introduction true. yeah true. and this is the place like yeah uh, he said it's we are having 50 meetings scheduled already, and if you are having yeah. a stand, then people are coming. So mm -hmm. uh, that will be very, very uh, important to understand, okay, try to be there and be persistent. I mean, this is not uh, the sprint race on 100 meters. It's a long run. I mean, artist life is a long run. It is, yeah. If can I add, <coughs> Christina? It's also, there are no re magic recipes on that, and uh, it is about personal relationship. So you have really to, to stay yourself. Uh, I know from some friends, for example, who said, okay, you know, my best networking, I do it on the dance floor, you know, because I love to dance. And the <laughs> first thing... <laughs> <laughs> some others do business and at the bar. And introvert people yeah, love yeah, to yeah, dance too. Uh, <laughs> some at the bar or whatever, you know. I mean, uh, some others, it's just... Yeah, 
I don't know, it's, oh, I like your bag, oh, it's a designer from my country, blah, blah, you start the conversation this way. So you have to be open, but not being like, oh my God, I have to talk with this person. I have to talk. You will not be able to talk with everybody at any conference. So to, to put yourself into such a pressure is not good. No, so, yeah. And so it's good to also go with the flow, and sometimes you will, yeah, I mean, yeah, human relationship. You will start talking with somebody maybe who is not as all interested in what you do, but is human, a nice person, and they say, ah, oh, but you should meet blah, blah, because uh, he's a friend, and he's... So you will have another kind of introduction, and, and what you were saying, so to, to go regularly. I mean, usually uh, one short visit brings you something to understand a little bit, but <coughs> also when regular delegates so show that you are, see that you are coming and coming again, it shows that you have a, you are professional, you are reliable. So it also creates a sense of uh, trust, which is important. Or take Sorry. Martina for a hand, and she will introduce you. To oh yeah, or oh, oh, ask Martina. <laughs> <laughs> no, she has two hands. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so it's really uh, you have also to to follow your personality and mm -hmm. uh, trying to to push yourself is probably not the best way. And one other tip in networking is uh, go to things that you like or which are relevant for you, being other showcases, conferences, film screenings, we have films, because you will also meet people who are uh, the same interests. In same interests, uh, and it will be way easier to connect. You know, you <coughs> see a showcase you like, and you see the next person likes it. Also, oh, it was a mm -hmm. cool show, blah, blah, blah. You start talking about the showcase, and then you start introducing yourself, but it, you don't know if this person can be use, useful. I, I don't like to put these mm -hmm. words, but it's just also about human relationship, and um, yeah, that's the way it works. Because <laughs> even we are humans. You know. And yeah. have your business card always with you. Business card, it's very <coughs> old fashioned. Anna, <laughs> <coughs> no, don't, never apologize for asking questions or adding something. I'm never asking questions, I'm all just mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine, that's fine, so, so far. Besides <laughs> our point of view, uh, the, I think the best thing you can do is to push yourself to the limit where you are, in, you, you are yourself. So you are different from all the others, and you are unique. And this is the way where people, how people will connect to you. And if you are that, then the people will come to you, and you don't have to go to them and Autonomy, yes, in connection. Mm -hmm. That's what it is all about. I mean, if you're an artist, then you know, should be interesting. And if you're interesting, that you are taking people's interest, then they will come to you. And I think that's the, like, the best possible way the artist can really yeah. build their, you know... Uh, but it can be a long and winding road. But you have to be patient too, mm -hmm. I'm yes. afraid. Yeah, but it's but if you're, you have to be on the right road. So, you know, again, also, and find your story. And... Because I've been listening to a lot of showcases, uh, no, sorry, to a lot of uh, applications of a certain showcase festival, and then there were a lot of very virtuoso um, piano players. I mean, they were incredibly good, but I couldn't figure out the story. They sounded the same, or I can't say that, but I mean, I just felt like, okay, yes, you're a great piano player, but what are you trying to tell me? So find that story, really. Yeah, look. Sorry to to uh, to add, but I I I just want to avoid. That's at least my experience. To that, this session is is putting too much pressure on the artist. Mm -hmm. um, to <coughs> me, my, this morning with the speed, we had some speed meetings with the showcase artists uh, yesterday. So my theory is really simple. If you do a showcase on an international level, you have the ambition that you're going to tour internationally that you have a label that uh, distributes your music internationally or you have your platforms. My question always uh, to do is, okay, do you have management and do you have an agent? Yeah, we've um, already said that. I, I, I uh, absolutely agree that the communication with the artist, which I prefer as well, but I prefer to have an uh, artist talk about artistic things. I prefer to separate that almost with all the business-related things because this morning I asked also to some bands, do you have an agent where, where I can talk to? If the answer is no, then I said, okay, but if I want to book you, then I have to talk uh, finances with you. I don't like that. I don't like to talk finances, budget, with an artist, it's, it's, 
uh, itself. So, uh, and that's also for the promotion. So, my, 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 it, it is important for an artist to self-market. It is important for an artist. It helps if you're uh, extrovert in, in terms of uh, introvert. It helps if you have your story right. But it also, if you want to tour, make sure that your business around you is sound and ready to tour internationally. Because you need to have management, you need to have yeah. uh, an agent that uh, can, if, if a presenter as I want to book, that you're ready and that we can talk. I'm a hard negotiator. I'm, I'm said, I'm, we're not I, distributing uh, money. No doubt. But I want, <laughs> I want to do that with an agent. I don't want yeah. to do that with okay. an artist. Okay, so. well, let's have an agent. Uh, I wanted to um, ask you as well and the delegates, uh, what if the artist is a manager as well? Because <coughs> you know there are a lot of ma uh, artists that are own managers because either of the finance or there is not, they didn't find the person to do that work. In that case, how do you deal with that artist slash manager? It's, it's all of you as well, but because you, you started, so yeah. Yeah, well, I, I've already said that in our, our showcase festival, it's needed a manager or an agent in, because of that. Otherwise, if it's uh, the same artist that uh, has a known structure for doing that, for sure there's someone, I don't know, usually it's the bass player that takes care about that kind of things. I'm a bass player, uh, <laughs> and that's why I'm uh, in that part of the business. The background. Um, you need someone that knows about that, someone that knows about international invoicing, about that kind of that kind of things. It's not really difficult, but you need someone and to show that you have someone that then takes then takes care about that kind of conversation and dealing with that, and that he's in the office. Be, uh, I don't know between ten in the morning until, uh, but not in the evening after uh, another work or whatever. It's needed it, in terms of internationally. Another thing is that if you are from here and you are not a really big, an emerging art, artist, start working here and with the, your neighbors, etc., and growing up a career. But if you are getting successful, at the end, you're going to have an agent because it's needed, because that's the, the creative process and the, and the business and, the, and a business plan and, and to mm -hmm. how to deal with a career. Mm -hmm. At the end, if you are successful, it's going to be needed. And the artist is going to need that because it's really hard yeah. to do both things. There's some ex exceptions, uh, such as Nani, that it's, I don't know, it's from another planet. Uh, she's not here. <laughs> um, but she deals with that. But uh, I don't know. I think it's quite difficult to combine both both things if you have a lot of work And there's do. always a time in your career that you don't have the manager yet. And this is also the time that we're speaking about where you want to start showcasing, but you don't have the manager yet. Yes. And it's really, I mean, I get daily, I get several many mails of saying, do you know a manager for me or would you know someone and those are people that are really already quite established even you know that i've seen around a lot and so it's that you know what i mean look i mean this is uh i, I understand you totally but it's not always possible yes but also i mean we are in the balkans i mean there are not many people in the music business doing management uh, that's Another issue, I mean, yeah. that's why Anna has to uh, do all the research, so I'm sh sure she's going to be manager of some other band very soon. Uh, <laughs> so th that's, uh, th that's one of the things, I mean, in the West you have people who are working and they are, know how to deal with this, but to reach to those agents, like today at the speed dating, most of the people didn't have the management and they would like to have, but how to reach them? They, they should have the contact, but then you have to invest to go showcase places. Because, I mean, yeah. you cannot try to somebody saying, okay, I want, if you can be my manager. I mean, that's no. terrible. I mean, it's not, not easy. I mean, I, I was pointing to Marina most of the times this morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the, new, the manager. She's selecting a band. <laughs> Maybe try the left hand. No, yeah, no, no yeah, yeah. She, she already no, she did, you know, she's very that. balanced yeah. in this, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's also about prejudices in the Balkans, there are a lot of prejudices. So, in Serbia, you can be a rock band or a punk band even maybe in, in Novi Sad, you know, but if you are different, then nobody really knows what to do with you. Know, and they are not going to manage you because they don't believe that you can have a large audience. Even if you have a really large audience in social media, because this is the way you kind of build up, this is what you can do today with the 
internet, you know, you just advertise yourself. Mm -hmm. I heard about that, yeah, it's a good idea. <laughs> you know, yeah. when you live in the forest, then you try to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> promote how you can. Yeah. But uh, that, that is the idea. So, so uh, then you have to find a way to be your own manager because uh, you have to have an, an association as well. And you are doing all the stuff, you are doing the office, and you are doing everything because this is the only way to sustain it. So, yeah, yes. and this yeah. is just the most difficult time in your career, basically. Um, yes, but I think it's also about the Balkans. We are kind yeah. of different, you know, it's different. It's really no, different. Don't think in the south of Spain, Spain it's quite more bad. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, uh, uh, it's... Uh, many and yeah, managers but, but, are usually thieves. Yeah. Uh, cheating people some, some and taking them, all the money. Some of them. <laughs> but that's, I think that that's another topic. Uh, it would be how to uh, get a manager in your, for your band. That's another yes. thing. But uh, And how to present and how to work your career in order to, to have a manager. I think and it would be really, really... Uh, yeah. Another topic. Uh, yep. something very interesting going on here. I mean, as an artist, you can come into uh, any showcase festival. Nobody in these committees is asking, do you have a manager or not? We, we do. Yeah, we do? Uh, yeah, many do, actually. It, yeah. Do they have to? Yeah. Okay. But, but this festival doesn't, doesn't, isn't it? Absolutely not. So then you come in here, and then it's interesting to have a manager. I mean, it's interesting, and also this is the place where you might find the manager, or you can ask people, okay, who would be the good person for so me? So isn't, isn't it for all these showcase festivals to, to combine these things, to try to... Yeah, well, the bands that are in a showcase program but doesn't have a manager... But isn't it also depends on the showcase. I mean, like Vomex or Jazz Ahead, you definitely need somebody to help you. I mean, it's, it's really terrible un unless you are called Group Naked, but then you, they have uh, people who are uh, working uh, f for you and helping you. But really, it, it takes lots of experience to be showcasing at Vomex and be your own manager. I mean, this is yeah. not realistic because uh, you have to be focused on your show and everything else would be maybe No, that was what I was trying to say. I mean, mm -hmm. if it's you're in a showcase festival, then you have to have a manager, don't, don't you? No, I, I think that don't. No. There's different kind of, of showcase uh, music festivals. Uh, for example, I know one that is in the south of Catalonia, that it's for emerging bands. And I think that it's the, the, um, the mission of the, the direction of that festival, thinking which are the, the appropriate delegates to be invited in there. So if you have a, a showcase festival of emerging bands, maybe the best would be to have a part of the delegates that are managers or booking agencies in order to get them in their rosters or, uh, or whatever. And uh, I think that it, it depends. It, we cannot say that all the music showcase music festivals are exactly the same. <laughs> Because they aren't, and there are some that can be useful, and some others that don't, depending on, on the on the on the moment of the career. Mm? But yeah, just to add, I wouldn't generalize neither about. I mean, at what makes we don't ask, do you have a manager, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, there are really all possible cases. Sometimes, in case of doubt, what is looked is, do these band have a, some professional environment, which will help making the best out of the showcase. But there are cases where not, but then we advise them to find people to help them already before the showcase, because it's no way uh, that an artist <coughs> come and be the manager or so, just comes, make the sound check, lives with the band, because some are planning this way, and, think, and, then, and then I check my emails and, and look for the, the booking offers. That's not the way it works. So definitely, if you are artist and manager, you have to plan, for example, to stay the full time of the, of the conference, to make promotion beforehand, to make the work afterwards, which is the most important. So there are no rules, but just being the artist on stage and think I can do this, yep. all the things at the same time, that's not really man manageable, definitely. What I just wanted to say is that I don't think you necessarily need a manager, mm -hmm. but you definitely need a booking agent. Mm -hmm. And this is a question of territory, <coughs> and you need to find different booking agents. If you don't have a manager, maybe it's not a big problem. Maybe it can be a member of the group who is dedicated to that. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I know a lot of groups in, in, in Hungary, for example, or other countries who do that and who don't want a manager, actually. Okay. But, because it's but because, yeah. <laughs> or what I advise also to some people, if they don't have time, if they don't feel it, find a friend, somebody you trust, somebody who really you <coughs> trust, who can organize all that for you. But look for booking agents. This is the most important, interitaries, who can represent you. For example, if you go at Babel Met Music Expo and you don't have a French representative, just forget to go there. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I think this is really important. There are different stages. Not the manager is the most important. I think the booking agents are sure. important and all the territories are working very differently. You know, uh, yeah. Thank you. Maybe we should ask the Bulgarians, how many uh, Bulgarian musicians, how many uh, showcases they apply for and why they think that Bulgarian uh, artists are not well presented neither in the Balkans nor in the Western Europe? I think you just, we just you asked. Just it's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so, you are here. Maybe did you somebody have, the have an idea? How many, somebody, how many uh, applications you sent to the showcase festivals at least? For example, me with my band, we applied to 35 showcases. And for the past two years, we got booked twice. But we went in, in total to only three. And this year, we're going to three more. But only as delegates. But I was doing some checking with other showcases. There are almost no Bulgarians that are playing in any other showcases. Maybe one to bands, maybe once per year in every two years. But we don't have musicians a lot going to showcases. And a lot of Bulgarians doesn't know what's a showcase. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, that's exactly what Peter said before. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, hello. Uh, hi, my name is Boyan. I run an event called Spike Bulgaria Music Showcase. And I want to piggyback on what Mila said, uh, the band people of Maha who played at our showcase this, this year. Uh, we run the event very much like you described. It is uh, as a place for people to meet and for a developing artists to find the support structure they need to go to the next level. So they don't have to go directly to, oh, we need a manager and an agent to be able to even play the showcase here. That is not where the Balkans are at at the moment. We have amazing musicians, but the business structure is yet to be formalized. And uh, the more and more people, uh, we try to have more and more exchanges with other showcases. We always send uh, bands either to Greece or to Romania, now for the second time. We also send bands to Eurosonic when they uh, when they bless us with the with the, the stars align and they say okay you can come and perform and that has been that has been happening more and more and i think it's been happening is because uh people outside of the balkans can see that bulgaria has a formal business structure and we have a model to educate young managers Mila is a very promising young manager. She maybe doesn't know it yet, but I can see that uh, because she leads her band like a, like a military operation. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just a snap of the fingers. It's an amazing thing to see, by the way. But yes, I uh, just wanted to add that, and uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think she has it. <laughs> She's got it. <laughs> okay. Um, are there any topics that you feel like we have not addressed? I don't know what the time is, of course. Still, my green watch is not working. Um, 10 to 5. I tend to 4. So we have... I don't uh, know. <laughs> we are over time already. <laughs> no. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. I'm definitely fired now. Yes. Hi. Sorry. Speak uh, who sing on two languages and going on showcase festivals. Good what question. would you recommend, like percentage on their native language and English, of course, because they have to have uh, English songs as well. But still, they can sing on their own language. How much do you think it's good? Very good question. I would say that zero English. <laughs> 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 Zero yeah, English. Zero English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, with the, are, with if, the if Brazilians are an example. Asian you know? music, yes. Yeah, <laughs> but if you sing in English because someone is uh, English is speaking or it's because you do that, go ahead with that. But if you don't, it's better to to, to be honest with you what, what you are doing. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, same here. 
I mean, I don't understand 80% probably of Romex. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no I, I mean, I, I, I teach, you know, yeah. at a music conservatory with yeah. the, uh, songwriting, and um, I get a lot of Germans out there, and Dutch, of course, and um, and they all want to sing in English, and, you know, and it's it sounds terrible sometimes. <laughs> and it's the very good songs, but, you know, the... Yeah, the, it's just not native. You can hear that, and um, so and their vocab vocabulary. Mine's also my vocabulary is also <laughs> not so good. So I recommend them to um, to at least start in their own language or to learn to speak better English. But um, and it works fine in the end. So yeah, and you know when you listen to singers <coughs> singing English and then after they switch to their own language. They are so much more at ease and comfortable, and it's, it sounds more natural. Unless you are, you know, bilingual, <laughs> then <laughs> we have another problem. Yeah, <laughs> you have to make a choice, maybe. Yes, yeah. And I think that we are in, in the global market, in where we are. There's plenty of offers from UK and the States or uh, English-speaking countries. So. They do that. They speak good English, but it's what you said. If your English is not good, uh, I don't know. It, it's not going to work better than than that. Yeah, for sure. If you are not writing writing in English, I mean, po poems and stuff, forget about it. Use your what you are best mm. at. Don't adjust adjust your. <laughs> yes, you can ask Mel Streep to coach you. Yes. <laughs> vocal coach for English accent especially because she wants to do songs in English as well, so yeah. Yeah, it has to be good because you always hear it. You know, often. You most of the time you can hear it and it yeah. just sounds... Goes also to the next panel, uh, go to market. And I believe that, that the, our new markets has to, has to uh, understand us. So uh, my suggestion is to, to give time also to the, uh, to the go to market panel and uh, to no. have one Very more... Very good idea. Yeah. <laughs>